guys, it's Lisa. I have my kids packed up and we are getting ready to head to the Spam Museum. Um, yes, there is a Spam Museum. I know we're vegan, so it seems a little weird that we're going to visit the Spam Museum, but actually it's a tradition. It's something we've been doing long before we became vegan and I didn't want to uh, deprive my kids of that something we do every year. It's free, so we're not uh, contributing to uh, like funding them or buying their stuff or anything like that. And it's super fun and yeah, they basically like have a big play area and like big displays and it's super fun. So we're gonna go into the Spam Museum and well actually we're gonna drive an hour and a half and then we're gonna go to the Spam Museum. So I'll show you what it's like when we get there. parking lot is like it's nice and it's readily available and everything but it's like really small and so I am just super shocked that I got parked in here with my big van and I will be really grateful if I get out of this parking space without hitting anything. My son journeying to get the stroller out of our, all our stuff. Special park. Okay, we are headed into the Spam Museum. Over there they have a statue um, and it's of like a guy like a farmer with two pigs. I don't know if anybody puts that together, that that's what's in Spam. Like, I don't know. Anyway, this is the Spam production line, and every year we measure how tall our kids are with the Spam, and then she is nine cans of Spam tall, whereas my oldest is 21 cans of Spam. This is where they can pretend to be making and uh, packaging Spam. I have one over there that is around and offered us spamples and I felt like a complete weirdo saying, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a vegetarian. No thank you to the spamples. It's really crazy, but like they have like a really awesome little play area in here and um, it's kind of like a McDonald's play area except it's like clean and they can like pretend a grocery shop and they can pretend to cook and then there's like a little picnic area over here and um, yeah, it's actually really cool. It's too bad it's all associated with spam. Then you can grill over here. So my kids are gonna come over here and like they're not gonna know any better. They're gonna like be grilling like avocados and zucchini and stuff. So the spam conveyor belt and all the little various spam. What is that? Fair, like not paraphernalia instruments, I guess. Um, it just. What I think, what I'm, the word I'm thinking, memorabilia, spam memorabilia. The fact that people kind of look down upon spam, they have quite a museum kind of like commemorating spam. Play. Uh, this is kind of what you walk into. Um, I'm headed over actually to fill my water bottle. They do have a really nice water bottle like sample thing. Look, they have spam lip balm. And this is super cute. It's a little spam like box that you can open, but like obviously I wouldn't get it because I wouldn't want to be advertising spam. I collect a pair of earrings every time we travel and uh, they have spam museum, spam earrings here. And I normally would think that's super cute, but I can't buy them because I'm not going to promote spam. Super cute. For the love of spam, these people had a spam wedding. Oh, good gravy. So we tried shopping for chicken and uh, it came off. <laughs> oh, I, I had I kind of had this when I was had this in my <laughs> That's skin. okay. That's a large chicken. I think it's a turkey. relegated to the kids play area so I can watch my kiddos so my oldest is gonna go film the museum for us so without further ado here is your tour guide. are you going to be filming the spam museum for us yes I'm going to be filming the spam <laughs> are you going to be animated and fun yeah I'm gonna be the most enthusiastic tour guide awesome pavilion uh, we got lots of spam cans lots of little spam collectible items just in these little glass cubes right here. Like lots of spam cans. Uh, uh, Misubi chefs are fans. We need spam for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We got like uh, spam uh, trivia and spam quizzes. And over here, you know, there's a spam maze game. And over here, oh, there's spam lipstick right there. That's great. 
Uh, and over here, you can get some Spam recipes so you can cook up some Spam at home. Uh, so that's like the entry pavilion style sort of thing. And then over here we have Spam around the world. So you can see like Spam in different cultures all over the world. Okay, you can take a picture with like the Spam mascot. Um, you can see in Japan, Spam in Japan, they got this, this uh, Spam video going on here. Some spam dishes they make in Japan, that's kind of cool. Sometimes I take spam in the United Kingdom. They go okay? English pub sort of thing in here. Philippines, One, two, three, spam in the Philippines. Nice. Uh, spam in South Korea. And one thing I thought was interesting in here is it is a traditional wedding gift in South Korea to give a gift pack of spam. This comes with what, 16, 16 or something, 16 or 20 things of Spam and two things of olive oil to that I assume to cook your Spam and all in packaged up in this nice little case. So I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, here in, I think this is Spain, it doesn't say it on it. Oh yeah, Spain, I think it's Spain. Um, the Spain cans. And uh, so there's Hawaii. And now in here we have a little exhibit on Spam's role in the military uh, as the uh, army troops and uh, they uh, ate Spam because it was uh, cheap and easy and uh, filling and that's what they looked for in army food. I got like this video going on here, uh, some stuff, more stuff. Yeah, I, I'm not, I haven't looked through that thing quite as much as I'd like to. Um, I hear like the history of Spam, how like a bunch of vintage cans of uh, Hormel products. So we got like the Hormel ham, like Dinty Moore stew, uh, Hormel chili. Uh, and here is a timeline of Spam cans. In 1936, 1937, 1941, 1950, 1982, 1987, 1997. And there's two special edition Spam cans. This is just like a replica of like the Hormel, Hormel store, the original Hormel. Uh, GUA Hormel and Co. Division Market. So this is like the original Hormel store. Here's a little diorama, a little scene over here. Uh, so this is the entryway again. Uh, there's like a little replica wagon filled with formal products. In here, you can pretend to be like a spam factory worker. You can package up some cans of spam. And look, you can time yourself on packaging cans of spam. And start, you can, and then you can uh, time yourself. And then when you're done, when you press the stop button, it'll tell you how many cans of spam the spam factory will make in that same amount of time. Is uh, how spam is made, like the ingredients of spam. Here's a little, uh, little thing right here about the Monty Python spam a lot thing. You can watch this get right there. A spam wedding. Mr. and Mrs. I love spam events, and that's pretty funny. This, they got a spam themed wedding. That's that's great. More spam memorabilia. Now this is something I thought was kind of cool. This is a spam. Not, sorry for my fingers. This is a spam powered motorbike. Uh, it's a little unclear on what. It, not a spam powered motorbike. It's a bacon powered motorbike. Um, and I'm a little unclear on what that is. But it says it's fuel B100 black label bacon biodiesel. So it's fueled by bacon, which is really weird. But they have it here. Just a thing, uh, educational thing about formal foods because you know they gotta promote their brands because it's a hormal thing um, transportation of spam through the ages and and here's the play area that my mom was just talking about so sorry my I keep just getting my fingers in the lens yeah so it's a pretty big play area it's actually pretty nice so I'm gonna give you back to my mom the most impressive thing is this like conveyor belt that goes all throughout the museum like it goes all over the place 
all over. And my little baby, when last year when she was teeny weeny, she used to just stare at it like it, like she's always loved ceiling fans, and she used to just stare at it. Now she's not as interested. Oh, no, no. <laughs> And I just wanted to like say that um, my kids, like, because I have a teenager um, who has always kind of been into this, it's something I didn't want to take away from him. But I definitely see things through a different lens, I believe, than most people. Um, well, I've been a vegetarian almost my whole life, uh, and then I became vegan recently. And um, I've always seen things through a different lens. But like being in this museum, even though we're not like condoning it by buying anything. Um, let me just show you something I see through the pictures and stuff. It in no way, shape, or form makes me hungry for pork. It makes me sad. See this? I think two parts from the same piggy. Seriously? Like it's cute? It's a cute little piggy that you just made into spam. So that concludes our tour of the spam museum. Um, I hope you found it interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. The Spam Museum is just a, uh, I don't know. It's something we started doing a while back, and then it's something we've continued to do. And um, like I said, I have a whole new lens looking at it through a vegan, from a vegan perspective. But it's, um, it's a fun little place for the kids to go, and I find it interesting that my younger ones definitely continue their vegan perspective even though they're exposed to a fun play area and things like that they continue to when they when they cook on the grill and stuff they make vegan chicken and vegan bacon and they found a whisk and they made vegan whipped cream and so um you know i don't think necessarily exposing them to it promotes meat eating or anything like that but anyway i hope you enjoyed it and i will talk to you guys soon